Thank you so much for joining me. I'm meteorologist Brian Shields, and thank you for being part of this weather community. It is your community. That's why I do this. So thank you for taking the time to subscribe and be part of it. Now, I want to get into La Nina and El Nino. I want to show you the comparison on what each of them means for the upcoming hurricane season, what they mean as a whole. So I'm going to break it down. I want to show you the comparison of them. We're about to get into a La Nina cycle. Now, one of the signs of that is some cooling in the Eastern Pacific. Here's the Caribbean. You United States here, friends in Canada. This here, this blue shading, uh, we're starting to see some cooling here in the Eastern Pacific. And I bring that up. We don't need to hang on to that uh, fact, but that point is, uh, the point I'm making here is that that's a sign. We're going from El Nino to La Nina. Now, I've broken it down in other videos. I've gone into kind of what it means uh, globally. It's just a, a change in a global weather pattern. So uh, you get warming in some spots, cooling in others, and it does impact the weather greatly. What happens with the La Nina situation is across the Atlantic Basin, the Atlantic, Caribbean, and Gulf of Mexico, there's typically less wind shear when you're in one of those patterns. That means we don't have crazy winds in the upper levels of the atmosphere, or at least above our heads, and that allows storms to build up. That allows tropical storms and hurricanes to get more organized, and that means we typically have more hurricanes and more tropical storms in the Atlantic Basin in a La Nina cycle. I want to touch on that in a second. Now, here's what we're seeing here. This blue shading, that would be La Nina. This uh, red shading is El Nino, and that's where we are right now. We're still dealing with an El Nino, but we've been seeing that going down, and we're going to see a quick transition as we get into June, July, and August, uh, deeper into September and October into a La Nina, and it looks like a stronger La Nina. Now, El Ninos don't typically last too long. They last about 9 to 12 months, and that's what we had, but typically we get into a neutral phase. Sometimes we quickly transition, and that that's what we're going to have here. We're going to go from one to another, not much of a neutral phase. We'll get right into a La Nina, and the timing's not ideal with that because the La Nina kicks in right in the heart of hurricane season. I mentioned June, July, August. Well, August, September, and October, when we should be locked into a La Nina, that's when most of the tropical activity happens. Now, that may sound scary. We've got a La Nina. Uh, that means more hurricanes, but that does not tell us where a storm is going to go. So I always like to put that out there. Even in a quiet hurricane season with just a couple of hurricanes out there, if one hits you, that's a busy season. That's not so quiet. It really depends on where things go. Now, as promised, let me show you the breakdown on an average El Nino versus La Nina. A La Nina season, uh, a hurricane season, typically there's 17 named storms on average. You can see El Nino less at 11. And again, we're going to be a La Nina. We should probably have somewhere between 20 to 22 uh, named storms, somewhere roughly uh, this upcoming season. I covered that in my hurricane forecast in previous videos if you want to take a look at that. A La Nina season usually brings about nine hurricanes versus five in an El Nino season, again on average, and four major hurricanes versus two, which are category three or greater. Yes, so I do expect it to be busy out there. But again, as far as where they go, that depends on kind of the current weather pattern at the time. Hey, is there going to be Saharan dust out there? Uh, there's a lot of variables to watch through the season. So I'll be tracking it storm by storm, and we'll wait and see what may or may not head our way. But it is going to be active out there and then we'll see where the storms go and I will be on top of that for you. That is my promise to you. So again, thank you for uh, subscribing. Now, we've been quiet across much of the Caribbean. We've had some gusty winds throughout parts of Florida and the Bahamas, especially northern Bahamas and central Bahamas too. With that front moving in, we've had some gustier winds in Cuba. That's the front here. Big system just piling up the snow in parts of northern New England. There's the front there. The front stay mainly to the north. I want to show you the winds in a second, but this big sprawly system clipping by now the Atlantic region of Canada. So we'll zoom down. Let me start big and then zoom into a couple spots for us. So here's that front trying to kind of pass by Bermuda down through the Bahamas. Cuba had already cleared Florida with some cooler weather moving in. There's the snow on the backside of it. Now, some of us have had such welcome rain in parts of the Caribbean. We've had some in uh, Trinidad, for example. I know we need more in many spots. We've also had some isolated areas of flooding. As we work our way from uh, today into tomorrow, breaking down our Friday, you see this system leaves us in not a ton of action as we get into the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico as we look ahead 
into tomorrow, including the upcoming weekend. You see this system just kind of slowly winding down. We'll have a few areas of showers. I'll zoom down in a second. And then as we go throughout the weekend, we'll monitor the next system pulling back through the U.S. Could bring a few showers and eventually choppier seas by late this week and more so earlier next week in the Gulf of Mexico. But the seas as a whole, Gulf and Caribbean, have not been too bad. Uh, it's been much more active in the uh, Atlantic uh, water. So there's the front there, bringing a few showers possible for us in parts of the northern Bahamas today and clipping by parts of western and central Cuba especially. May get a shower a couple over toward Belize, Honduras, Guatemala, El Salvador. We've had a few showers nearby the last few days. Thank you for leaving the comments. Costa Rica and Panama. I've been keeping an eye on that volcano, by the way, in uh, Costa Rica. We've been seeing some of that uh, rain around. Uh, not as much now in the southeastern Caribbean. Still some showers around at times today, but by tomorrow, a touch quieter, a little bit more spotty in Central America. And you can see that front that I was just tracking. By the time we get into tomorrow, it generally uh, washes out. And then we break uh, forward. Uh, we get into the weekend to break that down. You see some hit or miss showers. It may get a little uptick in the rain. Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, not so much Haiti, but Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico, even a couple passing showers in the Virgin Isles. I want to show you that ahead when we get into the forecast. So again, uh, you can see here again, more of the way of afternoon stuff. And then we'll get a few passing showers on Sunday, trying to creep back in to parts of the Eastern Caribbean. Now we have a front here. These arrows I know are a little bit small. Winds have been generally out of the East and the Caribbean, a little bit more out of the South for us in uh, Jamaica. But with this front pulling by the Bahamas, we're going to see the wind shifting around out of the north. Nothing too strong. We don't see a big uh, difference in most of our temperatures this time of year. Bahamas, though, it is going to be cooler, even parts of uh, Cuba, with this northerly flow right here, especially as we work our way into tomorrow. So the easterly breeze as we get down into the Caribbean, still kind of that northerly breeze as we work our way into the Bahamas as well, uh, working our way into the upcoming weekend. Now, as we get back here, been watching the mid-Atlantic of the United States, New New England as we get back toward uh, the United States and the Atlantic region of Canada over toward Nova Scotia. It's it's really going to be a fine line between some of the rain and snow, but some of the snow is going to stack up, especially this time of the year. Could be a little bit of a, a wetter snow in some spots. You see as we work our way into the afternoon watching near Prince Edward Island, uh, Maine, the snow totals really stacking up uh, today. Been seeing some of that this morning. And then as we get into uh, Friday, a lot of these systems not quite lifting up as much, moving a little more to the east. That may keep more of that rain in our coastal sections, watching over toward uh, Newfoundland and back toward Nova Scotia. Northern side, though, you see some of that rain uh, wrapping up. And then you see here as we get into a Saturday, still watching out for a chance of some rain and snow showers around in the northeast or not parts of the U.S. and back toward parts of Canada. So Jamaica, isolated shower tomorrow and Saturday. About a 20% chance for tomorrow in the Cayman Islands. Rain chance 30% today in Trinidad and Tobago. And then it's going down. So we're kind of trending back down somewhat. Uh, Trinidad in Tobago for us. Uh, Barbados rain chance about 20% an isolated chance of a shower. Still can have a couple spotty showers around St. Lucia. Rain chance 20 to 30% the next couple days in Grenada. Get back through St. Vincent the Grenadines also a 20 to 30% chance of now isolated showers. Martinique rain chance the same thing. About a 20% chance in Dominica. The rain chance is not super high in most locations at this point. Guadalupe included as we work our way toward Antigua and Barbuda about a 20% chance. 20% percent chance St. Kitts and Nevis and Montserrat. Rain chance in Guilla and St. Bart's 10 to 20 percent chance and a 10 to 20 percent chance St. Martin, Saba, Stacia. Rain chance does go up a little bit though in Puerto Rico. This is not all day stuff. Again, some spotty showers and storms mainly in the afternoon will start to kind of kick up tomorrow afternoon and through the weekend. So we could get a couple isolated showers. British and U.S. Virgin Islands. Dominican Republic, again, Friday into the weekend, a few isolated showers and storms, mainly dry as we get back through Haiti. Bahamas, again, few showers. Northern sections of the Bahamas uh, for today with that front. Turks and Caicos mainly dry. Rain chance 5 to 10 percent. Cuba, I showed you some of those showers. Uh, western and eastern zones, a few trying to pass by and breezy conditions. Belize will have some showers around at times. I was showing you Belize, Honduras, Guatemala, El Salvador, Yucatan and Mexico, a couple of uh, isolated showers. 
mainly dry though still aruba curacao and bonaire rain chance is going to stay limited over the next several days including the upcoming weekend bermuda will watch out for this up front that will be pushing in rain chance about 40 to even 50 percent costa rica and panama a little uptick in some of the uh, rain uh, guyana rain chance about 50 percent tomorrow and about a 40 to 50 percent chance in the next couple days in suriname northern venezuela rain chance 20 to 30 percent so looking ahead as we get closer to the hurricane season we're less than 60 days away to the start of the hurricane season global weather pattern changing which happens Happens. Again, we're going from El Nino to La Nina, which typically means more activity in the tropics, and that will happen. And yeah, that does increase the odds of something at least being nearby, uh, but it does not mean we're all going to get hit. I'll be tracking it storm by storm and watching those current patterns as something develops. I'll have a good handle on what's going on and where things will go. So thank you for being part of this weather community and have a great rest of your day.